You know, folks, prior to just a few weeks ago, I didn't spend a whole lot of time in my hot tub. And I would probably only used it probably three or four times uh, at all prior to the, that time I started using it fairly regularly. And I'd only used it as a hot tent twice. And um, one of which it was completely <laughs> unnecessary whatsoever. Uh, as a matter of fact, it was a horrible night's sleep because it was too warm in the, in the tent. Now, the past several weeks, I've spent a lot of time in it. And um, about a week ago, uh, a, little, a little more than a week ago, a week before this last weekend, this is Thursday, so almost two weeks ago was the last night that I spent in it. And um, I started developing some theories and ideas about teepees in general, uh, functional space of mine in particular, um, the idea of hot tenting. And I wanted to sort of like... Um, sort of throw all that stuff out to you, all, all the things, the thoughts I had. And for those of you that, that hot tent, or those of you that have TP or conical style uh, tents, um, maybe you can shoot back some of your uh, ideas because this is really the only hot tent I've ever owned. And it's also the only conical style tent I've ever used, even though I actually have I own another one that I've not yet had an opportunity to use yet. And it's also a hot tent. But uh, <clears throat> I just want to uh, throw that out and to see what kind of feedback I can get back in the comments section. Now, I left the TP standing when I left almost two weeks ago. I wanted to see how well it would weather. I knew what it was doing when I was in it, when I was maintaining it, um, tightening everything up. I just wanted to see how it's going to uh, stand up to extreme weather conditions because I knew that we were forecasted to have some <laughs> pretty severe weather. And like I may have mentioned earlier, if not, I'll, I'll mention it now. I have um, come out many times several times to shoot and <laughs> it seems like something always happened whether it was a technical difficulty i got interrupted i needed to go do something else in the spur of the moment things like that so it just never came to pass and i had planned on doing this much earlier but i'm sort of glad now that i didn't because i get to see exactly what happens to a tp tent in particular my tp tent when it's not maintained, it's not daily, uh, you know, uh, tended to, and all the um, uh, guy lines resecured and the snow cleaned off of it and everything. And I have been here several times to check on it, but it is to the state that it is now after almost two weeks. And uh, go ahead and take a look. Now, this is approximately one-third the size that it was when I first put it up. As you can see, how much of the tent has actually been forced down to the ground. And before we go in it, I'm going to walk you around so you can see it all. <clears throat> and this material stretches a lot. I noticed that uh, the nights that I stayed in it, when we had rain, when we had snow, when we had, you know, the different weather conditions that we had when I slept in it, and the stove heat also affects the fabric. So I don't really know if this is a good thing or a bad thing. I just know that this stuff stretches like you wouldn't believe when it gets wet. <clears throat> now, uh, the first night that I was in it, that it rained. Uh, me and my uh, buddy 
of Bill Johnson stayed in it. I noticed that there was a little bit of condensation issues, things like that. However, I noticed that the fabric had begun to sag after I had, you know, had tightened up the guy lines earlier that evening. And by that evening, uh, it was actually, I was sleeping close to, or closer to the wall. And the wall had sagged to the point to where it was touching me and the condensation was running down and it actually got my sleeping bag wet. <clears throat> now I didn't have too much of a problem with water running in under the tent because it has no floor, but the, the ground was already wet as it was. And I had a heavy duty uh, space blanket laid down as my moisture barrier, as I, I always do. And uh, it did help okay. However, being on an uh, being on uneven ground, things slide. Things slide downhill, and I happen to notice that uh, at one point during the night, that my sleeping bag that I was sleeping in slid to the point to where the bottom of my sleeping bag had actually went underneath the TP. It was now outside of the TP, and. Um, so that's it. That is a problem. Uh, the, my, my sleeping bag got wet. It did not soak all the way through to where it affected my feet, which I'm very, very thankful for. Now, I started thinking about some resolutions that I have to these particular problems as far as dealing with the uneven ground. And uh, one of which is creating a framework or at least a, um, a foot post like uh, you'd have on, on your bed at home, you have a, a, a headstand and a, and a footstand to your, your bed. Um, you know, something that sticks up. So if I were to do something like that, a log, something like that, that I could stake into place on the inside of there so that if I'm sliding downhill, my feet are going to stop on that one log that I have staked into position that it's not going to go anywhere. The other thing is to make a framework out of saplings and stake those into position to where I can lay my heavy duty space blanket in and create almost like a bathtub. Because one of the times I was standing here, it was raining very heavily and I did start getting water going through the tent. And because I had been in there for a while, the um, heavy duty space blanket compressed water began to run across it. So if I created the framework, just a basically a big rectangle of um, latticed um, saplings and to drape that um, heavy duty space blanket in, it's gonna create basically a bathtub and I can stake that down so it's not gonna go any place on the outside of it and set my sleeping bag down inside it's not going to go anywhere. My sleeping bag is not going to go anywhere. I'm not going to go anywhere. And which would remedy that problem. Both of which are, um, they're issues. I mean, you, you have to really work at trying to get this thing um, to where it's usable. I don't know if it's worth the effort. The other thing I was thinking of, and there's a lot of companies out there now that have them, and they have backpackable lightweight cots. I, th I was thinking about that. So a cot might be the answer for that, which would be perfectly fine. And uh, th there's a good bit of condensation on the inside of the tent. When you utilize the wood stove, um, if you did so with dry ground, I didn't notice the condensation as much. But when you're setting up and the ground is already wet, or chance even have snow or whatever, but it was just wet from uh, prior day's rain, there was a lot of condensation in there, even when you're using the wood stove. And if you roll up against the inside wall of the TP tent <coughs> with that condensation, it triggers it and it rolls down and it will get your sleeping bag wet or it will drip on you. Either way are things that can prevent you from having a decent night's sleep. Now, I'm going to go ahead and open up the um, teepee tent 
so that you can see what the interior looks like. Now, I guarantee you it's not changed from the past couple times I've come out. Uh, when I've actually come out, I've fired up the wood stove, which I'm not going to do this time. Um, and, um, you know, had, had a, a chance to try to dry it out, which uh, failed miserably. Uh, the firewood is still fairly dry, except for that which was actually touching the ground or has now been squished or laid upon by the walls of the TP tent. Now the firewood was still fairly dry. Um, the, as you can see right here, that underneath there is where the firewood is. Now the condensation of stuff that comes down has made the exterior of the firewood wet, but it hasn't soaked it or anything. So it's, it's still usable. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and unzip this and let you see what's inside. Now this is a halfway decent little environment. However, it's a fraction of the size that it was when I first directed it. Now, as you can see, the firewood's still uh, pretty dry. Uh, the ground is definitely much drier than it is outside. Um, you can see where the, the snow has uh, piled on, has stretched out the material that's in here. The um, center pole is about a foot and a half down into the soil. The legs for the wood stove are, uh, they're almost completely submerged and sunk down into the mud. And um, yeah, uh, when I was in here the other day, if I'm able to use that footage, I will share that footage with you because the inside of the tent looked like an ice cave. And uh, look at that, look how pretty blue that is. It's amazing all the different colors. The, uh, oh, that one goes all the way up to purple. How many different colors the titanium uh, changes to. Very, very cool. Anyway, uh, well, as you can see that, you see the little drips coming down from the inside of the tent. So condensation is an issue here. Uh, there is a vent and um, the snow has pulled that down to the stretching of the tent has actually uh, pulled that down quite a bit as well. So uh, venting can be an issue. Uh, I really think that a, uh, uh, a floor on the interior of that uh, TP tent would take care of a lot of the condensation that's in there because every bit of moisture that's in the ground is also in the atmosphere of the tent. Like I said, I'm not a connoisseur of, of hot tenting or TP style tents or anything else. This is really the only one I've ever slept in, I've ever used. So I'm certain that there are probably tricks that you guys probably know that you can share with me in the comments. And if that's so, please do so. Because I'm not enamored with this whatsoever. Um, um, there was a couple nights to where I maintained the fire. It was horrible. The, the wood stove is not large enough to accommodate um, large pieces. And I take that back. I think the wood stove is a decent size, but the opening... The door is the doorway is too small to put substantial uh, pieces of firewood in that can burn for a substantial amount of time. Also, uh, the fit of the stovepipe. I'll take you in here. Let's see that the fit of the stovepipe is not ideal, and there's a lot of gaps in the stovepipe. And that uh, makes it very difficult to control the flu, control the vent. And, um, and then, of course, you're dealing with the fact that it's 
basically a big rectangle of titanium that's rolled into a tube with two end plates on it. And one end plate has a door. And um, so there's, it's not designed for precision heating. Uh, you just shove, you know, firewood in there and it, it burns. If you could get a larger piece of wood in there, even with um, the issues it has with not being uh, sealed enough to where you could get the most out of your flu and your vents, uh, I think you would have been able to get a, a good bit more time to sleep before you needed to restoke it. And um, I was looking at about every hour, every hour, uh, 15 minutes or so, I was waking up and I was noticing that it had burned down uh, quite a bit. And that's, you know, trying to play with the adjustments as much as possible, which did not lead to a good night's sleep. Uh, uneven ground, uh, sliding uh, around on the floor, the condensation, dripping issues, uh, all those combined into making a, a very unpleasant night's sleep. I never have those issues when I sleep in my hammock. And I've slept in... Uh, very, very, very cold temperatures. I think it's uh, the, the coldest night. It was like 18 below zero uh, in my hammock. And I, I still had a better night, night's sleep than I did in this thing. Um, in my humble opinion, the best way to hot tent that I'm going to use with this, unless you guys have a better uh, suggestion or I find a better stove that I could use to where, you know, I'm going to stoke it up when I go to bed and by morning, I'll have hot coals to uh, go ahead and get the fire stoked back up. Uh, I'm just going to get and let it go out. I'll, I'll hang out in it. And then when it's time to go to bed, I'll lay on top of my um, sleeping bag. Uh, maybe have a, a whoopee or something like that on top of me. And um, then as it gradually gets colder, I'll get in a sleeping bag. Then I'll gradually zip it up go through whatever I need to and just finish the night up. And then when I get up, have everything already pre-laid out, pre-arranged for me to be able to um, stoke up the fire, get it going and get it nice and warm really quick. Uh, one of the other problems I have with this stove is you really can't cook on it. Um, it's incredibly fragile. Um, and uh, I would not want to put any amount of weight on there. Um, I wouldn't want to have anything negative happen um, to a live fire that could possibly bust loose uh, from this stove. So it's definitely not a cooking stove. It would have been really nice to be able to have uh, the ability to put uh, cook pots on there for water, uh, things like that, heat up soup. I mean, the, matter of fact, I mean, I wouldn't want to be in it to have it hot enough to like fry eggs and stuff. But I mean, I guess you could, you could open it up like I've got it right now and do that and then turn the vents and stuff back down, get back in it and, uh, you know, enjoy a, a, you know, a much less uh, temperature in there, much less heat uh, for the rest of the evening. But unless I get better advice or a better stove, uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to get and enjoy the, the heat in there until it's bedtime. And then I'm going to rack out and I'm just going to let it, it die out and have whatever I need to get it started the next morning. And, uh, I think for the most part, those were the thoughts that I, I had established through my limited uh, use of this uh, conical hot tent. Uh, I do have an issue with the fabric stretching the way it did. I did not care for that. Um, if you're in an environment to where you, uh, are in a blizzard situation and you do not have, uh, uh, the realistic means to constantly get the snow off the tent, um, that's how big of a space that you're going to have for the number of people that you have in there. Um, when you figure that this is supposed to be an eight person tent, no, that's, that's not, that's not good. Uh, if you're outside of it during a blizzard, uh, you're getting soaked, uh, or you're, you're getting covered with snow that's going to turn into water. It's going to make you wet and to have that kind of an issue. I understand that it's an ultralight tent and it's designed, 
uh, to have ultralight materials. And uh, me personally, um, I, I don't like the stretching factor of this at all. Uh, it stretches too much, even in not extreme situations, just wet. Uh, the rain allowed it to, uh, to stretch. I didn't much care for that. So I guess if in the future uh, I do want to pursue hot tenting as a wild camping option that I'm going to use frequently, I will probably be looking toward uh, a different um, tent, a different um, structure. And uh, as a matter of fact, um, after my several nights in this and winter weather, um, I would happily go back to sleeping in my hammock um, all the way around. Uh, I think it was, it's, it's a better experience for me personally. However, uh, I am going to think about all those things that I've just shared with you. I'm going to try to address those issues and to resolve them in some way, shape, or form and give it another go. And as soon as I do that, I will definitely do uh, post another uh, short video letting you know how it went. And any of the things that worked really well, I'll share with those, share those with you in detail. And the things that didn't work out real well, I'll let you know that too. Um, we're all in this uh, great wild camping game together. And the more we share, the more we'll learn. And the more we learn, the uh, bigger uh, knowledge base we're going to have for our bushcrafting wild camping bag of tricks. Well, folks, <clears throat> uh, thank you so very much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you've not yet clicked subscribe, please do so. It helps that uh, YouTube algorithm uh, be able to get these videos out for more people to see them. If you uh, are watching the video, you like it, um, and you haven't subscribed yet, please uh, click the subscription uh, tab and hit the notifications bell. That way you can be apprised of all the new videos when they become available. Um, if you have any comments whatsoever uh, to share, this I think is a very important video to share those with. If you have any knowledge of hot tenting or TP style tents, especially in the situations that I was in with um, you know, extreme rain, uh, high winds, uh, uh, deep snow, any of these issues I've dealt with here in the past few weeks, if you have any experience whatsoever with those, please post in the comments section, share your thoughts. Um, like I said, I'm a novice at this and I only know what I know because of what I've experienced. And if I'm doing something completely wrong and you can point it out to me, it could completely change my viewpoint on hot tenting and using a conical style tent in any way, shape, or form. So please do that. Uh, like I said, folks, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you doing so. And I will see you next time.